War is one of the many unfortunate cases where Four Paws, the animal welfare organization for animals under human influence, must reveal, rescue, and protect animals in need. In Sudan, where rival factions wage a devastating war with each other, Four Paws must battle the elements, logistical challenges, and their greatest nemesis, time. Many captive lions, hyenas, and other wild animals are suffering behind the line of battle under terrible, life-threatening conditions and must be taken from the country immediately to a species-appropriate place. The Four Paws Reveal and Rescue Response Team, helmed by Dr. Amir Khalil, are a special unit assembled precisely for these types of missions, where demanding conditions require special skills. The clock is ticking. What happens if they run out of time? Finding out is not an option. November 2023. The team has just arrived in Port Sudan. The mission, get the animals from Sudan Animal Rescue near the war-torn capital Khartoum to safety in Wad Madani, meaning the team must travel over 2,000 kilometers and cross uncertain territory. They are joined by Dr. Frank Guritz, head vet at the Leibniz Institute in Berlin and frequent Four Paws collaborator. After Dr. Amir briefs the team, they must go to load over 20 transport crates, which were custom-built locally, onto the truck which will join the rescue. When they arrive, it is already dark. As you can see, the truck is coming now, and we're going to load the first finished crates on the truck. A nasty surprise waits for them. So um, I saw several crates which are not ready. The wooden floor is not fixed yet, and uh, in some of these cages, they forgot the, the safety, the safety measure to secure the sliding door. Curfew is rapidly approaching, and time is running out. So unfortunately, Sudan Animal Rescue informed us that we lost another lion. This makes the whole rescue even more urgent. So we see that we're losing um, the animals every day. After a frustrating start to the mission, the team regroup early next morning to drive the completion of the crates, which must be finalized by curfew. All the safety measures must be implemented. So we have to postpone my, our trip to Khartoum one day. We started to load some of the crates. Yeah, it was, we were pretty busy, but I think we did a great job and we finished and um, we can go home now, luckily. At dawn, they can finally leave for Wad Madani, which will be their base of operations for this part of the mission, and then continue to Khartoum. It's very early in the morning. I think it's like uh, 5 o'clock, 5 a.m. And we are now on our way from Port Sudan to Madani, to our next location. The drive will take uh, approximately 20 hours. Unfortunately, what awaits them are more logistical challenges, like rolling blackouts, limited access to communication, and reports of escalating conflicts that may jeopardize the mission. We want to postpone or delay the mission. We don't know why exactly. The team is in the dark and are growing increasingly frustrated. After sitting down last night and discussing their options, they decide to take an alternate route and continue with the rescue at dawn. So, I'm quite tired, but now I um, actually can't wait for the action to start. Sure, it would be several challenges during the trip, but I think we are prepared. We've done our part. We have everything. The team is in a good mood, which is really great. On the way, um, yeah, excited. Maybe a little bit nervous uh, how it's going to be at the, at the checkpoint crossing to Khartoum. Today, the team will leave Sudanese army controlled territory and enter rapid support forces controlled Khartoum through a so called gray zone, a lawless stretch of highway that could prove to be a delicate security situation. Not a brief. We are not in Sudan now, in general. So no army, no police in this area. They fix the vehicles in the convoy with white flags and embark on the last few kilometers of the journey. 
yeah, we are getting closer and closer um, to the lines, but first of all, we have to enter the border here. Time is uh, it's, uh, against us. Uh, I, I think it will take a lot of time going back with the lines, uh, crossing all these checkpoints, and um, having in mind that we might prevent or should prevent uh, traveling uh, at night time. So we have to think about when we leave. Security comes first. The team make it to Sudan Animal Rescue safe and sound, but the situation they find is dire. There are much less lions than last year, and they are very thin, very, very thin. Uh, animals are really in very, very, very bad condition, really a very critical situation, emaciated, apathetic. Lion Leo is in the worst condition and needs immediate medical attention. He is too weak to be put under anesthesia. So we just... Uh... We did an IV access and put him on an infusion and now we give him time and uh, rehydrate him very slowly. I'm not sure whether uh, the lions are going to make it. The team must continue working as all the lions must be anesthetized and crated before sundown. A massive job that brings lots of difficulties, especially for Lion Leo. Yeah, he is the dead. We expected this will be the destiny of all the animal if you are not here now. With curfew approaching, the team has no other option but to spend the night in Khartoum, hoping the transport to Wad Madani will finally happen tomorrow. The team returns in the morning, and after checking the created lions, spends the day focusing on the other animals and preparing for the journey ahead. Right now, um, the Sudanese uh, rapid forces just left us. Um, so we were like um, escorted until now and now we're passing um, kind of like the land between the borders. We just heard some shootings really nearby. So I'm actually quite nervous to be honest. After a tense ride back, the convoy finally arrives safely in Wad Madani. Mission accomplished. The animals are safe here and have access to food and water. For pause, must work with local authorities and international partners to find a long-term, sustainable solution for their care. But for now, it's time to leave Sudan. Until. Hello, Amir. Hi, team. How are you doing? What's up? Hi, we have a situation. So we have a serious situation. We just got the information from Sudan that uh, the Sudan Rabbit Support Forces took over Wad Madani and all the team members working in Imparona caring for the animal have to leave. So we have a serious situation and we have to work now in a, on a plan uh, to evacuate the animal and within the next 48 hours the team to be ready uh, for a challenging mission. War has come to Wad Madani, and the RRR team is called to action once again. Within 48 hours, they are back in Port Sudan, ready to embark on the 12-hour journey to Kassala, which will be their new base of operations. It's quite emotional to be back in Sudan and seeing what a difference a war brings, not only to humans, but also to animals. Since they left a few weeks ago, some of the animals were taken to Dinder National Park near the Ethiopian border, while others stayed in Wad Madani. The mission, get both groups of animals to the safe zone in Kassala, and then ideally out of the country via cargo flight from Port Sudan. By the time the team gets to Kassala, the animals from Dinder National Park have already arrived. 
Wow, uh, you can see the animal really are suffering. They provide the animals with much needed medical care. So um, we just prepared a solution um, to clean the roots um, first. So we waited until the crates are cleaned. After that, we go on uh, apply wound spray. So they are prepared for the transport. The convoy from Wad Madani, on the other hand, still has a long journey ahead of them through airstrike zones and checkpoints. The team decides to hit the road to meet the convoy halfway to facilitate their transit. Three hours. Just one thing. The rendezvous point is on the front line between the Sudanese army and the RSF, where conflicts are escalating and tensions are high. Just to let you know, the last information is El Fao at the point. Now the fight is starting. Starting? They, they, they are fighting. So we have to finish quickly and we go. Luckily, all goes smoothly. But it has been a long day for the team, the animals, and the local partners. Back in Kasala, the team checks over the animals and notices that some of them need emergency care. Lion Kareem is in the worst shape of all. This lion is really very, very sad and depressive condition. But how he reacted yesterday since we saw him, he's a fighter. The time has come for the team to load all of the animals onto a convoy once again and head towards Port Sudan in hope of leaving the country soon. Uh, I still have so much adrenaline because I know what's expecting us in the next 48 hours. I think now all the animals are fine. They get no water before the trip. So now we are going to Borsudan. Their journey is grueling and very hot. The animals are struggling. As mission leader, Dr. Amir decides that the convoy will stop in Sinkat to wait for news on flights and to care for the animals. Though the weather is more forgiving for the animals and the team, crowds of people start to gather, making their jobs much more difficult. It'll be fun. We'll get it done. Meanwhile, an important call comes from Vienna. Hi, Josef. Hi, Amir from Vienna. I hope everything is fine with the team and you. Can you give me a short update about the current mission in Sudan? So the team and myself, we are now one day before the D-Day. We succeeded to come to the city of uh, Sinkat. We are about two hours away from Port Sudan. Uh, we are preparing now the animal and the crates we have two, currently two big trucks where uh, the lions will be lately, will go to South Africa from Jordan. We have a lot of challenges here. A lot of people and interested children come when they hear there is lions in the city. You know, Ami has agreed, uh, safety and security for the team and the animals are highest priority. We are very near to our goal. Uh, yeah, sounds really great. Thanks for the update till now. Yeah, and all the best for the team and you. Say goodbye from us here, and we will stay in touch and update you tomorrow about the situation. While continuing to water, feed, and prepare the animals, they make a sad discovery. One of the small wild cats did not make it. The sand the cat is dead. But the team must be strong and focus on the care of the other animals, like Lion Kareem. To be honest, I can't wait to uh, leave and go direction, I'm on. seriously. It's time to go. Yeah. After a few days in Sinkat, Dr. Amir received some more bad news. Uh, I mean, we just got the information that uh, 
the airplane, the cargo airplane cannot take the total team member, nine passenger, and they can fly just as animal. The highest priority is that the team member should leave at first level and to evacuate from Sudan. He makes a hard decision that he will stay in Sinkat with the animals, while the others should immediately catch the first flight out of Sudan to Jordan. The team leaves at dawn. Leaving Dr. Amir to keep an eye on the animals and to escort the convoy to Port Sudan. Kareem continues to need constant care. Kareem don't look well. Some water gets him up and alert, but they need to get him to safety immediately. The wounds, I think, uh, one of the main factors which affect his movement. Yeah, finally. Now I can see they are in the way to the airport. After arriving safely at the Port Sudan airport, Dr. Amir can finally breathe a sigh of relief. Until. As you see, it's suspended. Again, there is a problem with border control. The air aviation here is still waiting documents from the Wildlife Authority. Dr. Amir turns to his expertise and succeeds to find a diplomatic solution, as always. Finally, the animals are out of Sudan and on their way to Jordan. Mission accomplished. The team and the animals reunite at Al Mawa for Nature and Wildlife, where some of the animals will find their species appropriate home. Spirits are high, and all of the animals are doing well. Or so they thought. Uh, Karim Tabasawi, today morning, was not able to survive. So many months as this animal was suffering, fighting to survive. This morning when we got the news, I, I could almost not believe it. He endured so much. I mean, we, we rescued him from Khartoum. I mean, all this trauma, what he experienced, and he deserved to have a really great place. The team must power through and get the rest of the animals to South Africa. We are right now in Lions Rock. Our 11 animals from Sudan arrived yesterday and today we are going to release them into the enclosures. I'm really excited for the day. Last year in April the war started in Sudan. I'm sure we will start to flee. But the animal was also a victim in this war. And finally today they have the South African sun. No more explosion, no more pomp, no more hungry. So now they are in the best hand, the best care. And I think this is great, great what Fort Post is doing because it shows exactly in the dark time this candle, what Fort Post is doing. It is a hope for humanity. With their arrival at Lion's Rock, the Sudan animals begin a new chapter in their lives where they will finally get the care that they deserve. Thank you for joining Four Paws through this mission. Only with your support can we achieve animal welfare worldwide. <laughs>